I'm Dee Dee Lavender. I'm a software engineer here at Spreedly. How many of you are familiar with 3DS? Cool. Um, if you're not, you might be asking, what is 3DS? If we were in Europe, of course, this would not be a question. They're very familiar. Uh, here in the US, it's less common. I can tell you that it is not Nintendo. It is not a virtual universe. It's a fraud prevention security protocol for online card-based transactions. Basically requires cardholders to complete an additional verification step for online purchases. Daniel, our product VP, called it a, the dinosaur version of two-factor authentication for e-commerce. I thought that was a more accurate definition. So 3DS stands for three domain secure. The merchant domain represents the merchant from which a purchase is being made, as well as their bank. The issuer domain covers the bank that issued the card used for the transaction. And the network or interoperability domain represents the payment infrastructure, usually managed by MasterCard, Visa, etc. Now don't worry, we're not gonna go into all this detail, but I wanted to show you a high level visualization of the steps involved in a 3DS transaction. Anyone here done a 3DS implementation? So fun, right? Uh, 3DS was introduced in the early 2000s when online purchases started really being a thing. And there are some pros. In some cases, it might help reduce fraud. Early on, oops, early on it helped create customer confidence. There's some liability shift from the merchant to the card issuer. Now, if you heard all the qualifiers I used so far and predicted a list of cons, you would be right. There are several. That liability shift is not guaranteed. Of course, there are exceptions, limitations, specific conditions, et cetera, et cetera. That customer experience, that extra step that used to create confidence now adds friction sometimes confusion, and results in a high number of abandoned and failed transactions. Online fraud um, has grown more sophisticated with time, but 3DS, 3DS is essentially the same, and there are more issues. This is so problematic. Who only uses web browsers? Also, the primary means of data collection via iframes introduces several big security issues. Easy passwords are easily guessed. Difficult passwords are easily forgotten. Data points such as birth dates are easily obtained, etc. There actually isn't time for all the not so great things about 3DS's current iteration. So I'm excited to say 3DS 2.0 is a thing. Online transactions have changed a lot since the early 2000s. The payment industry recognized the need to create new specifications that better reflect the support, reflect and support the modern demands of e-commerce. Kind of cool, right? All that data changes the game. Now, if you're a developer, you may be thinking this, but don't worry, it'll be worth it. 3DS 2.0 will be device agnostic. This is a key improvement. It will enable mobile and in-app transactions, as well as digital wallet payment methods across device types. Tokens and biometric authentication methods, such as voice and face recognition, are considered more secure than static passwords. They're much easier to use and create a better experience for consumers. Risk-based risk -based authentication enables issuers to get additional data from the transaction context, as well as merchant and cardholder profiles. This also means that the new 3DS 2.0 protocol supports the PSD2 directive from Europe. Nowadays, a frictionless customer experience is critical in e-commerce. This new protocol, with all the improvements over its predecessor, is likely to see much wider adoption. Before you get too excited, let's have a look at the timeline. Of course, you see Europe is ahead of the game. MasterCard has published a deadline for issuers at the end of this year and given merchants around another two years. Visa? Well, let's just say soon-ish. Thanks for listening. Happy to talk about 3DS or Google Pay or anything else. Come find me.